Hello, everyone. It is May 3rd, 2023, and I am Red We Met, and this is Adam Flowers. Hey, Red. Hi. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. So we're going to talk about prison. Prison. One specific one I have in mind is uh, Terre Haute, Indiana. And I know a lot of people that went into Terre Haute and got out. And they had an honor farm there, too. I believe Frank uh, Collada was on the honor farm there. But a lot of people were talking, uh, street people that I knew that were connected, not connected, connected, but connected. I mean, connected with the mob. They used to talk about people going in there and they would come out with cancer. And they said it was something about the shots that they gave them shots when they went into prison okay. for inoculations for different things. And so <clears throat> I talked to an FBI agent, a couple of them, Leo DeAngelis, Ray Shryock, several. I mean, there was half a dozen that I talked to and they all had the same opinion. They said, it seems very strange that they all came out and they died of cancer and they didn't have cancer when they went in. So it was kind of a, a mutual uh, opinion that something was going on there. Was it? We can't prove it. Nobody ever proved it. And believe me, if they had it planned that way, nobody would ever know. Nobody would ever know. And I knew several people that went to Terre Haute and um, that nothing happened to them. Absolutely nothing. They got out six, seven years later and they were fine. Okay. So, so both, wasn't there something about the Oswald having some kind of like cancer stuff that he was working on in Louisiana? <laughs> that, that, was there something about like that, that where you inject, inject cancer into the, yeah, wasn't that? No, I'm that was, uh, no, that wasn't Oswald, but Jack Ruby went into prison in Texas yeah. and got cancer and died in there. Okay. Now, there was somebody else, a, by, a guy by the name of Dave Ferry, that was uh, working with cancer. I believe Oswald was working yeah, it was, with cancer. It was Ferry. Scott H. just said it was Ferry. And then J Jack Ruby, so he was, right, okay, everybody's on the same page. But it seems like uh, it's a good way for prisons to actually murder you because you don't know when it's happened. And everybody has to take inoculation shots when you come in. Is that maximum security? I believe that was a minimum. Terre Haute was a minimum. It might have been a maximum, Sonny. Hmm. I'd have to look that up. I really don't remember. I don't know what it was then and what it is now. The prisons have changed. Their classifications have changed a lot. Sure. Um, maximum security. Mark with uh, pardon? It's a security security maximum security with minimum security prison camp. And it's the Federal right. Bureau of Prisons, population 1,159. Opened in 1940, current facility 2005. So they must have rebuilt some of it. I'm guessing. I'm just looking at some some um, some they facts. They did some add-ons. Some add-ons over the years. Okay. Houses special a special confinement unit for male federal inmates who have been sentenced to death, as well as the federal execution chamber. So they got death row there too. That's where Tim McVeigh was uh, executed. Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh. Uh, Unabomber? Who is he? Oklahoma bombing. Oklahoma bombing. Oklahoma bombing. Got it. Unabomber, yeah? No, I'm thinking Kaczynski. No. No. Oklahoma bombing. Uh, okay. Timothy McVeigh went there, and he requested a firing squad. And they wouldn't give it to him. Got it. Um, Marquette Gloves has a comment here. Want to read Go it? ahead. Uh, I actually knew a man from Terre Haute. He called it the gladiator school of the federal system, and he also died of cancer. Strange. Yes. 
All right, treetop. Cancer cannot, we were going to get on this subject, cannot live from one body to the next, guys. Cancer is more or less DNA matched. Um, oh, I don't know about that, Tip Top, because uh, the Cancer Research of America has yeah. uh, found out that the cells can be infected. And they were doing it with mice 60, 70 years ago. They're infecting mice. I, I thought I heard something like that too, but Treetop says an example: your cancer is your cancer only. I know there's different types of cancers that could affect different things. There's thousands of them, right? Thousands. But small cell, small cell cancer is really easy to transport. It transports easily into a lot of people's DNA. Marquette I gloves, no way. Treetop. Right now, you can get cancer from a lot of things. Yeah, what's that, Red? You had the skin cancer, you said? I've got a little bit more coming up. Oh, you're going to have to go back huh, and get some more taken off. Yeah. Hmm. You might say I studied a lot about cancer. When I first heard the word cancer, you've got cancer, I said, oh, my God, I'm going to die. And he said, no, There's no, we're just going to take it off. can't identify. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. There's really, it's like cases but anyways let's get back to tara hut and uh let's let's talk about that uh, tara ho tara ho <laughs> oh all right let's start with that i was thinking about actually bringing it up how the hell do you pronounce this because i have heard people say tara hut tara hoat tara hoot i've heard i've heard it all different ways is how, how is it what's the correct pronunciation of this word I'm not really sure, but uh, the people from Chicago that I knew and that we talked about it, we called it Terra Ho. And it was I, really Terra Hut or, let, or Terra. Let, let, let's ask, let's ask, let's ask Google, okay, what what the federal prison is in um in Indiana. Let's see what they tell us. Hey Google, what's the federal prison in Indiana? I found a few places near Indiana. The first one is FCI Terre Haute at 4200 Bureau she said Road Hope. North, Terre Haute. Terre Haute. The second Hear one that? is USP Terre Haute at 4700 South Hill Road, Terre Haute. Hope. The third one is Edinburgh Correctional Facility at 703 23rd Street, Edinburgh. Hope. Terre Haute. Terre Haute. We sometimes, I guess, we, just, we let the T goes, the T and the Haute go silent. Because Terre Haute. Terre Haute. Yeah. Okay. okay. Terre Haute. Terre Haute. Terra, instead of Terra Hoot, because because Frank Collada called the Terra Hoot, Terra Hoot, something it was, and he was there. I mean, he he was there. So they were like, "Here's where we are." And he was that's on the iron farm there. He was on the iron yeah. farm there. Yeah, exactly. I believe that that is correct. Okay. Hey, right on. Luminous grin. Cancer survivor. A lot of, right. A lot of tough guys went there. Um. Hi, guys. Someone tell me they remember WDHF Radio, Chicago, early 70s, Hard Rock, Terre Haute. I don't know that. Sorry. Maybe other people do on the channel. So, Sonny Zaro, some <laughs> cancer cannot live in someone who is alkaline. Yeah, I hear that the pH of the body, if it's off, can cause it. But if it's on, doesn't. I also heard uh, cancer lives on sugar, too. So sugar's really bad for you. Uh, I was an ambulance. Oh, so I was on an ambulance call once for a car accident victim. The victim was a female guard at Statesville. Toughest looking broad I've ever seen. She wore a metal belt buckle with the Stateville logo. Holy cow. Wow. Toughest. <laughs> Metal buckle with the Stateville logo. That's that's somebody who takes their work seriously, right? Going to wear a belt, metal yes. belt buckle with the name of your job right there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a little, uh, yeah. Okay, then. <laughs> All righty, then. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. Fire Marshal Bill here. All righty, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Uh, large marge was her name <laughs> okay if you were a lady of the evening in Terre Haute, would you be a Terre Haute ho a Terre Haute ho <laughs> oh my gosh oh, i don't guys. think they have any women there 
It's an all men's facility. Used to be. Yeah. I know women that went to Lexington and other places, but they didn't go there. Yeah. Um, what other what other prisons were us? Statesville. They, hey, uh, did, did you guys see that? Did you watch that show, Prison Break? No. No, it came out in the early two thousands. It was a it was a mini series, ran three seasons or so. I didn't watch all of it, but it was filmed at Joliet. That's where they filmed it. Was in Joliet. So Joliet um, was uh, quite a prison. It really was. Also, uh, prisons around Chicago. Uh, the mm-hmm. most common that people went to, like Marshall Cofano, he went okay. up to uh, he went up to um, uh, shoot. It was in Wisconsin. I'm trying to think of the name of it right now. It was uh, the closest one to Sh- Oxford, Oxford, Wisconsin. They had a federal penitentiary there, and above that was Sandstone, and then they had Terre Haute, and those state penitentiaries, like. The one where the gal you were just talking about was that they were yeah. state penitentiaries, but they were rough, very rough. Frank Ferraro said that his uh, bladder cancer, the, the doctor told him, if you're going to get cancer, that's the kind you get the bladder cancer. But he said it sucked. It was wor- hurt worse than the heart attacks, heart attacks and bladder cancer. Frank, my, my doctor told me if I'm going to get cancer. Oh, what I God. have is, um, uh, squamous cell skin cancer it's encapsulated so it just comes right off you can cut it right off sew it up and wait for the yeah. next patch to come up <laughs> somewhere else every every eight nine years i have to go in and get something removed like a mold you know something like that treetop said he had a cousin who was female was at alderson with martha stewart that's where martha stewart went yes alderson, huh Gawain Maxwell is um, right here in Tallahassee at the federal prison here in Tallahassee, Florida. Okay. John Cooley Jr. I was at Robinson State Prison in Terre Haute. Really? John Cooley did something bad. So he got in trouble. No, you got caught, John. That's what happened. Oh, that's no good. (laughs) That's no good. May I suggest the house... Okay. The Rouse House Revisited by Terry Mars, PhD of Western Illinois University. It's about the Rouse House takeover by Solly D and the kids after the 1980s Rouse family murder by Libertyville. What is this? What is he talking about, Red? Do you know this? Yeah, that was, um, it was a high publicized case in uh, Libertyville. Libertyville is up by uh, Wheeling. It's up up in the North Shore, um, North Suburbs up there, right off of Milwaukee Avenue. Or Milwaukee Avenue goes right through it. John Cooley was also at Joliet and Stateville. Man, you John went to Cooley, a lot. You got of- around, man. They moved you around Holy. a lot. <laughs> Holy cow! Um. Huh. Okay. So, Julia, when I worked at Air Care. There was a female guard there that got her face bit off by an inmate. It was so bad, we had problem problems finding where her airway was. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Julie. Oh, that had to be awful to see that. Man. they You know, going to pr- prison is not a good place. I mean, it's not a fun. I, John, John <laughs> Cooley Jr. obviously can tell you this. Okay. I, I've never well, been. The room service, want... the, room service the, the food is bad. Well, you know, I've heard. Bad. I, uh, no, 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 Red. You know what I've heard? I've heard that actually in, in um, I was taught, I met a guy who who was in prison with uh, OJ out here in, in Nevada. Met this guy. I was talking to him one night. And he, um, he was telling me stories. And I said to him, hey, I was joking. I said, I heard the food's really bad there, right? And he said, no, man, he said, the food actually wasn't all that bad. He said, it was county. That's what was bad. He said, the food in county jail was shit. He said, once you got into the into prison, it wasn't all that bad. A lot of people just wanted to get to state prison, the state prison, because they'd feel safer and more comfortable. 
out of county jails. You feel safe. But anywhere. going into a federal prison, it was like a country club compared to a state prison. Albert and Chick Roviar R Roviaro, I think I got that one right. Roviaro got thrown in the hole there for trying to cook a rabbit on the radiator. Yeah. What? You get that hungry that you want me to try to cook a damn rabbit on a radiator to eat it? Yeah. Oh my God. Who is that, man? <laughs> All right, Rick Charlton, is it Axford or Oxford? I say Oxford, O-X. Oxford. Ox. Oxford. I would say not Axford, Oxford. Um, what is this, the pronunciation show? <laughs> hey, I, knew, I knew three or four people that went up to Sandstone, and one of them was George Bulahanis. George Bulahanis, uh, I don't know who he's connected to. I think it was DeFranzio, if I'm not mistaken. But George was in Berwyn. And um, he went away for something, and we had a going away party for him. Okay. And he went up to, um, he turned himself in and went up to uh, Sandstone. He was back in like three weeks. He won his appeal. Okay. He was back in three weeks. And I was thinking all the money we gave him, you know, <laughs> everybody's giving him an envelope or giving him something for the party. He cashed oh. in on that one. Uh, they sent a lot of Chicago mob guys to Milan, Michigan. Um, Milan. I don't know about a lot, a few. I that's lately in the in the last, uh, I'd say twenty years. Okay, okay. Um, John Cooley. Nah, they put it on me, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure he they did. Yeah, everybody that's in jail, they said, I didn't do it, though. It wasn't me. <laughs> it's like it. the Shawshank Redemption. How many yeah. people are innocent? I'm innocent. We're all innocent. <laughs> all of us. <laughs> Except Morgan Freeman. He says, oh, they got me. <laughs> I'm the only guy that admits that he's innocent or guilty. All right, Jim Magnifici. I have five sisters, four of which have had cancer since 15. Three have had breast cancer, and one started with melanoma skin and was cleared in February. This year, she has it now in multiple places. Please pray for her. Definitely will, Jim. Uh, I'm sure everybody My will. My prayer is out for you, Jim, or yes. your family. Uh, yes. Melanoma and the types of cancer you're talking about are genetic. They're genetic. You carry the gene for them. What I have is not genetic. What I have came from uh, too much sun exposure when I was 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. Now, that's what they tell me at Cancer Research of America. All right. So, John Cooley. <laughs> John, I'm innocent, I tell you. Treetop says diesel therapy, Cooley. Diesel therapy. It's a joke, Red. It's jokes, so you know. I got it. It went over no, my head. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't have it either. It's over my head. A diesel therapy, Cooley. John's got it. I don't I didn't get it. I have no idea. Um, can you imagine getting sick in there? No, I, I wouldn't. I can't imagine even sitting in there. Um, thank you, Don Cheech. Um, when my brother was in, San, was in Sandstone with the Chicago outfit, he said it he said, if more like the movie Godfather when they went to jail, they called it Club Fed, Med. That's what I was saying. It was a very easy place. Not too, uh, not too hard. No. Don't you know Hazen Pfeffers? Peanuts, Peanuts Pansko was a butcher. He worked in the um, um, meat, meat department, and he was actually a butcher. And he cut out steaks for the right people. You know? <laughs> and he'd make sure the guards and everybody were taken care of. Rick Charlton, for all of our conspiracy theorists, it's a little off topic, but watch the new documentary about Virginia, Brazil. James Fox, Aliens. Okay. <laughs> for those of you into all of it, uh, I believe they're real, by the way, just so you guys know. It's... Uh, Okay, Al Palato was in Sandstone. Al Palato was there. A lot of people wanted to stay close to Chicago so they could be visited by family. 
Okay. I read when Gacy first went to jail, we're talking Waterloo, Iowa, uh, in prison for sodomy, two counts of sodomy. He was a chef. He recommended the use of spices and the food improved dramatically. Well, imagine that throwing some spice into the food. Hmm. You ever think of doing that, Red? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought everybody did that. What do they did? They just didn't. They didn't put any spice in. I, I don't know. Chicago Joe agreed. Leanne, don't think Adam's a foodie. Love rabbit. Oh, you guys are talking about rabbit. What's Hassan the pepper? Hassan pepper. Yeah. Hassan <laughs> pepper is a delicacy. Are you talking about rabbit? You eat rabbit. I love you can't it. You're talking to a magician. You can't eat rabbits. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've eaten a lot of them. Talking to a damn magician here. I can't even think of eating a rabbit. They're good. <laughs> All right. I've actually eaten rabbit. I ate it one time. I've tried it. It was at the wind buffet and they had a little bit of it on the day with it. And I tried it and I was like, yeah. And then I felt really bad because I ate one of my furry little friends. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see a rabbit poop though? Right? Yeah. Yeah. There's like little tiny little bit. How the hell did they get each one of them the same size? It's like, I don't little... know. We used to call it rabbit turds, <laughs> but they're because... all the same size. They're all the, and they're perfectly rounded. They're like little M M&M and M factories. Those guys. <laughs> Wabbit season, and when they get you, you wascally wabbit you. Rabbit cooked in olive oil, garlic, and hot cherry peppers. The best. Yes. Don Cheech, good... I'd, I'd I'd actually try that. That sounds good. <laughs> not, that sounds good. good. Yeah, that sounds it's really very good. good. Uh, Patricia Colombo, George Wilson. From 1976, Elk Grove, Illinois, she slaughtered her family because she was written, because she was written out of the family will. By the time she started high school, the father was also in the auto parts business. Never heard of this. Have you, Brad? You no. were around 76. No, Patricia Columbus. Sorry. Um, yeah, no. There was yeah, so much yeah, going no. on. In, there was so much of that going on in the 70s, chop shops and everything. Stealing cars, taking parts. All right, Jim Yeager, Jim Yeager, Sam Mooney, Giancana met Eddie Jones in Terre Haute. After Sam got out of prison, he took over the black belt policy racket from Eddie Jones. That's correct. Ah, uh, policy racket. Yeah, that that was the uh, that was the one Cafano was involved in. Fat Lenny got killed. Uh, Fat Lenny Cafano. And they actually moved in. Giancana okayed it, and they became partners. And after they were partners, they said, we're going to take the whole thing. The policy uh, racket was on the south side in the black neighborhoods, and um, he was the top dog at the time. He was the top yeah. dog at the time. Jones was really something else. But I think he was encouraged to leave town. <laughs> Okay, Marquette Jones, a guy who was electrocuted at Terre Haute, had one last request for the warden. He asked him, will you hold my hand? <laughs> Marquette, that's funny. I like that one. Marquette, maybe that's why they went to lethal injection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Julie M., that's true. Gacy, he was the head chef. I understand Dimer was the head chef, too. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah, he cooked up those think... heads, man. He was the chef of the heads. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> when he was in, he was in the in the prison too. I met there was a magician at a convention I met. He told me a story. He was he was the correctional officer where Dahmer was you know dinked in the head. Before they did that, you know, the guy they held him down on the face and they took the the meat slicer in the kitchen and they shaved Dahmer's nose off of his face, and then they put the pieces on top of a pizza. And they ate it. They wanted a Dahmer nose pizza. All right. So I would hate to think what spice Gacy put in the food. Yeah, no kidding, man. I, yeah. That's up. Adam, did you ever see those two guys, comedians, magicians that pull a hat out of a rabbit? Yes, I've seen that. That I, my buddy Jack did that joke my buddy jack was doing that stuff he was doing the drink in the windex and i'm gonna go streaking and it prevents i'm gonna get nude and run around this will prevent me from streaking he was doing that on cruise ships before amazing jonathan was so but comedians magicians they're worse they're the worst 
freaking thieves. They're pi pirates, man. They steal each other's material so fast, so often. Anyway, um, this butthole. Don't think think should have been a magician. Leanne, they come out of the same butthole, so don't think too much about the size. Yeah, but you know, it's I don't. Yeah, all right. Anyway, have you ever smelled mothballs? No. How do you get their little legs apart? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody oh, told me God. that in high school. When I was in high school, I was a sophomore in high school when I heard that. Uh, yeah, that's an old one, man. All right, let's stay on topic. Mr. Hoffman, there was a Chicago executive who was sentenced to Sandstone. He commented to the judge, I'll be able to brush up on my golf game while there. The judge immediately demanded he be sent to a tough prison. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's time when they sent him to Terre Haute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, so I let's get Oxford. Up. Oxford was a medium. They had medium, medium medium security. Uh, okay. Jim Yeager, Phil Leotardo. You want compromise? How's this? 20 years in the can. I wanted Manicot. 20 years in the can. I wanted Manicot, but I compromised. Uh, I ate cheese, grilled cheese grilled off the cheese radiator. on the radiator. What? What's manicot? Manicot must be a some kind of flamey. Is that that grilled cheese? That's that Greek thing they do with the cheese. Manicotti. But there must be some kind of manicotti. Talking about manicotti? Oh, yeah. you know what? That's what, he, that's what he meant. Yeah, manicotti. He's talking about the thing with the cheese in the center of it. That right. you, know, you guys are making me my mouth start watering thinking about that. It's about that time where we get hungry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, how did they know that Dahmer smoked? They found butts behind the couch. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Rhonda, I'm laughing so hard. It's great to laugh. Yes, it is. Manicotti, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what it is. He misspelled it. I, there was no I on the end. Uh, how do you know the guinea pig poop's always the same size? Adam, did you know guinea pig poop is always the same? No, I've never been around guinea pigs. Uh, no. <laughs> I never had guinea pig as a pet. I never really took care of guinea pigs, so I wouldn't know. I didn't have to clean up after them. But rabbits I did. Um, having an Italian sausage with red peppers, you guys suck. Man, uh, come on. Flaming cheese, a uh, Greek cheese, is uh, Saganaki. Right, Saganaki. And that's, that's and yeah, very good. Party. The pasta tube with the ricotta. Yeah, I got it. I've had it before. Um, I've been hungry since 420. I'm sure you have, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know the God. feeling, Jim. <laughs> that is so funny. So, um, guys, this is a uh, hold on. Chris Valente. Do you know my dad? His name was Dino Valente. He was killed by Rucka Venus, Rucka Venus, in 78 by Tacos guys. Dino Valente. No, I didn't I, know him, but Valente, a lot of Dino people Valente. were killed by Tacos guys. Yeah. Um, anybody on the show know that name? Um, my mother made them half cheese and half sausage. Manicotti's with half cheese. Yes. And half I had a guy, oh, I had a guy good, on. Oh. On May Street, on May Street, uh, actually it was Ogden in May, or excuse me, Grand Avenue in May, and he used to make my sausage for the Italian beef. Well, he asked us what we wanted, and he'd put in the sausage when he was making it, he'd throw cheese in there and, and make the sausage. It was great. It was terrific. Oh. It was great sausage, but oh. it had no preservatives in it. So whatever you ordered, you had to cook it all up and Finish it off. But it was right. very good. Oh, this sounds good. Rhonda, Saganaki. I thought that's where we dropped the atom bomb. No, that's Nagasaki. <laughs> not Saganaki. <laughs> I see what you did there. That's funny. So the guy wanted ah, to get on, smarter. Hit that like button. Help the guy me out here. Get... <laughs> yeah, be sure to smash it. So the guy wanted to get smarter, so the doctor gave him rab rabbit pellet shit. The guy said... This is rabbit pellet shit. Doctor said, no. You're, you're getting, getting smarter, smarter already. <laughs> <laughs> God. 
Uh, flaming cheese. Opa! That's what they do in the cheese. Opa! Yeah. I was hanging out in those Greek restaurants, man, when I was there. That was so much fun. There were, there was Greek restaurants for all over the place. Calumet City, White. Oh, they had good food. Oh, they, had they good were good. Food, man. A lot of the Greek restaurants were really good food. They were. They were. At yeah. the MGM, uh, Nikki Kokinas in Cicero, he had Greek chicken all the time. It was great. Mr. Hoffman, FD, he met a flaming Greek waiter who spoke with a lisp. <laughs> Flaming Greek waiter spoke with a lisp. Oh my God! Um, Whoa! Bill Crawley's just eating chicken parm with angel hair pasta. You know what are you guys doing? Watching, eating food while you're watching the show? What what the hell is this? You know, you got to bring some for I everybody. I know Leanne's go. I ate the shit out of Panera bread today. <laughs> you know the problem Panera with Panera bread. bread is. Here's the problem with Panera bread. It's like. $15 for a sandwich, and it's all bread and, like, a little bit of meat in there. That's, that's, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, where's Greek the meat? Where's the beef? Oh, no, not back to this one. Keith Alton, Viagra prescription comes with a warning. It's not polite to point. Yeah. <laughs> Red, takes, Red takes that at night to stop himself from rolling out of bed. <laughs> Flushed the bottle of that down the toilet the other day. I can't get the seat to go down now. Uh, did, did it taste crappy, Leanne? I had a ribeye with jalapeno poppers and quail eggs on Sunday. You got to eat again, Rick. It's Wednesday, man. <laughs> um, Adam has a I, question here. Oh, sure. It's a red silly question. But how much of a ladies' man, to put it politely, Tony was? Do you think he has any kids out there somewhere? Thanks. Interesting question. Do I think? I never thought about it. <laughs> I never thought about it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, he may not have kids because he had to adopt Vincent. Was that because he didn't have a uh, – was his count no, too low? Prolific. He was prolific. No, you could be prolific, but just not have the the you know the, the enough going. I think he was capable. <laughs> and maybe Nancy wasn't, or they just didn't want to have a kid physically. I don't Vanity. know what their story was. We never Vanity. discussed. I don't know. It. Yeah, I, I you know I never I never asked Frank that either. He was never yeah. Anyway, um, but Tony was not shooting blanks. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. She guys drinking coffee at 3.37. Oh, you're in my time zone, John Panazzo. Um, you're out here on the West Coast. George Wilson, me and Rye, me and two me and two friends took a ride from a guy about 78. We were eighth graders. The guy had a silver T bird, and we were at Cumberland Mall and had to get back to River Grove. Sure, it was Gacy. No way, George. Wow. You got in the car with Gacy. Are you serious? Oh my God, man! Eighth grade, you're oh, one lucky son of a gun. You are lucky, man! Wow, there's a Gacy survivor on the channel, y'all. <laughs> Greek chicken has to be a joke there about the back door somewhere. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe I. <laughs> I like what you're thinking. You know, there's got to be something funny here. What do you get when you cross a row gain with row gain with Viagra? Don King's hair. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. I love it. Oh, Leanne, you do the salads over there at Panera Bread. All right. Uh, Ryan Brown. Adam, I recently watched a YouTube video on Watch Mojo. They covered the Eminem murders. In the video, they claimed that Sam DiStefano was with Tony. It wasn't Milwaukee Phil. I yelled they're at wrong. my phone. I saw the same yeah, thing. Yeah, no, he knows they're wrong. He's he's saying he yelled at his phone. People are putting up videos and they're not they're well, we've made mistakes. We're, I mean, we're not gonna lie. We've made mistakes no. before and said things that weren't true, and we went, oops, and we tried to correct them. But once once the video's there, it's there, and then people go, Well, it's so it you know I've been I've been talking about this for some time now. People are becoming legends because I heard this, I heard that, I heard yeah. this. And all of a sudden, it's blown out of proportion. Yeah, exactly. Robert Greco, 
Good morning, Vietnam. <laughs> it's, you made a show live. That's awesome, Robert. Uh, I stuck up for my friend. They said he eats shit on rye, and I said he doesn't like rye. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What do you get when you cross the telephone pole in a rooster, a 10-foot cock that wants to reach out and touch someone? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. Um, Jeez. That was... I've got the question here. Um, Off red. topic for Red. Were you around for the stable fires in the late 70s and 80s? Oak Forest, Palis, Country Club Hills all had stable arson. Some were owned by Hanson. Yes, I was there. I was there. And I testified to it, too. I went before a grand jury on that one. You did. You went before a grand jury on that. I was aware of every one of them. Huh. Okay. So, Red, how many going away parties did you go to for outfit guys heading to prison? Did you ever go to any going away or coming back parties? Yes. Who's? Both. Uh, okay. The most, the most one that stuck, stood out in my mind was uh, Bulahanis, George Bulahanis. Okay. And he owned, um, he had a place in Lyons. I think it was close to Michael's Magic, Magic Touch in Lyons. And uh, he went away, big party. And we all gave him some money, you know, to help him out in prison, whatever. And he was back in a short time. And then they had a welcome home party. And I did not go to the welcome home party. I felt this is a scam. He's getting money out of us. <laughs> his brother, Chris, was there. His father, Nick. That whole family was a, a real story. And not many people know about that family. Yeah, that name doesn't uh, um, stand out in my mind. Bulahanis. 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 Bulahanis, B or P? B is like a boy. boy. Okay. His um, father, Nick, was a bank robber. And uh, both sons were just thugs. They used to open up places on, um, they had hot dog stands everywhere with Polish and everything in the black neighborhoods on West Chicago Avenue all the way out. And it was a, I did a bedtime story on them. Hmm. They were very um, demanding people, very demanding. Bari's Delicatessen at Grand Avenue may be the best, made the best sa sub sandwiches in the city and is still there. Bari's Delicatessen, Thomas Ruan said. Um, Do you have to bring a machine gun to get there? <laughs> that's the problem, right? <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> Oh, so, um, Robert Greco, my cousin, the late Randy Franklin said Gacy as a kid, he knew Gacy as a kid. He'd come around his group when he was a kid. Jeez, man, Robert, Robert's got a cousin that knew him. Um, no, you're luminous. You're not in any timeout <laughs> unless you put yourself in it. Rhonda, Taco Bell, a Mexican phone company, <laughs> Taco Bell. That was from a movie uh, with uh, Burt Reynolds uh, that took place in Las Vegas. That what, was a that line joke? that was in that movie. That joke? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, hey. Um, Bobby Bag of Donuts, what's the difference between a jewel thief and a peeping Tom? Well, one snatches watches and the other watches. Yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> I've not Thank said it. Thank you, Bobby. Elder, L, L, Chuck, Chuck, Ellert, Ellertson. Ellertson? How you doing, Chuck? Ellertson. 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 Chuck Good, to see, you. Good to see you on the channel. Hit that like Welcome. button if you like it, folks. Hit subscribe down below for red and uh, smash the like button. And, the and if we have any new people like on button. here, um, that you can uh, join the channel if you like. Yep. And that's we're going to have some special stuff for you. And that's it will be for channel people only. And also, if you hadn't read my book or you're interested in buying my book, you can get it right here. Uh, yes, sir. Adam cares. Got the sucker popped up there. Nobody cares and what he did about it. Well, it's that there's a uh, link on the bottom of this video description and where to get it. And 
it'll go out to you autographed if you get it at redwoodmet.com. So um, the, the going away parties were a gay affair. The coming out parties were a gayer affair. <laughs> my God. <laughs> oh, my God. You're so funny. Holy shit. Oh, so fast, some of you. Mr. Hoffman FD, I was on the fire department, and then we had one on LeClaire. I was on the fire department, and we had one on LeClaire and 183rd. And one at Forest Forest View Farms off 167th west of. That's Cisco. the one that Hanson. The first one that I was aware of that Hanson burned down. Actually, uh, the third one. Uh, uh, it was right behind. It was it was owned by Bill Cummings, and he was a competitor of Hanson's. And Hanson said uh, Roger Spy over there to actually huh? burn him out, and that's wow. how we got Roger Spy to come back in and testify against Hanson. Because yeah. he didn't want to go to jail for the arson. He didn't realize there was no statute of limitations on arson. And when they asked him, can you trade us up? You know, trade us up to something else? He mm -hmm. said, well, I knew this guy that uh, hired me to do this job. And um, he killed three little boys. And he, oh he gave him a, a description of what Hanson told him. He testified in um, Hanson's trial. Wow. Schuster Peterson murders. Um so so uh Ryan Brown. I saw a video where a guy claimed that he was assaulted by Gacy in a department store men's room. He ran home afterward, lucky kid. Man, I wonder you and Ryan said it earlier, he didn't buy it that the first uh Gacy victim was an accident. And I don't buy it either. I mean it, it this I guy never I never no. bought that. Yeah. By the way, um, Red uh, Ryan said Red's book is a great read. I finished it, and I'm rereading it. Highly recommend it, everyone. So check it out. Thank you, Ryan, and great. Thank you for the great review you wrote on Amazon. I really appreciate it, guy. Um, there was a mushroom farm next door that caught fire. A lot of horses perished. Ah, oh. yes. That's a fact. You know, and that, that's got to suck, too. Losing, uh, you know, you're there to help these creatures. And you oh, can't when you're trying to get them out at 6 a.m. in the morning, when the fire takes a starts at 5 o'clock, and you're trying to get them out at 6 a.m. in the morning, and they're screaming and smoke inhalation, all different kinds of problems, yeah. you get some of them out, but the, you always find carcasses in there. In the mid-'70s, nice. there was a bad stable fire in Crete near Balmoral Racetrack. I remember that. It killed a lot of horses. Hanson have anything to do with that one? No. Okay. No. Actually, that was oh. the owners of the uh, Balmoral track, and uh, they wanted to rebuild it. Um, all right, Robert Greco. Remember the Lion's Cave down the block? Magic touch nice owners magic touch i think was uncle harry's place fran and nick had a disco on ogden avenue many mob that was went lions on ogden avenue yeah that was, that the was very nice. on ogden avenue that's what i was just talking about bull Hans was there that's that's it okay all right um rick charlton remember that ep uh, sopranos episodes where the fat dude was dancing in the gay bar in a tight leather funny episode didn't end well for the fat dude I didn't watch the Sopranos. You didn't watch all the Sopranos? Okay. No. So, Bobby Bag of Donuts, Red, how many times did you go to the Sandstone to visit Lombardo? Not once. Okay. I went up there to visit Peanuts three times. Okay. And I talked him into rolling over and turning government witness or becoming an informant, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Frank Ferraro. I told him. I told him do you want to die in here? You're 68 years old. You got another 30 years to do before you can get out. Do you want to die in here? And he thought about it for a couple of days, and eventually we made the deal to get him out. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Julie, I'm very sad. Yes, that is. It is. I mean, Thing like that um mr hoffman leclerc and 183rd the mushroom farm was adjacent 
uh, from that stable fire. Uh, the and Ram kids used to go over there and get the mushrooms all the time. They were hallucinogenic. Uh, no, they weren't hallucinogenic. Come on. They were the mushrooms that the, all the Polish and the Italian guys would go out there and they'd pick them in the fields to cook them. They weren't hallucinogenic. Not that horse manure. Not that horse manure. Really? Fact. All right. I, all right. Did you? How do you know this, Red? Did you ever try them? No, but I knew people that did, and they were acting very strangely. I mean, it was like LSD or worse. Mm. I never you, tried them. You should try them and watch the movie Saving Private Ryan and see what happens to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough about that. So I'm sure Gacy could claim, would claim all 33 of his murders were accidents. He just couldn't get the handcuff trick right. He just couldn't get that handcuff trick right. Oh, my God. What about the garrote that he put around their necks? Oh, God, man. That's just it's so screwed up. All right. That was Vito. He was based on a real made guy, Vito Arena, in the Roy DeMeo's crew. We're talking about the guy who was dancing in the bar in The Sopranos. Uh, gotcha. Blue Stacks. I haven't said this name before. Hey, Red, how often do you go back to Chicago, or do you do meet and greets? I don't go back to Chicago. The last you time I was there was in 2017, and I saw what a mess it was. The buildings had changed. Some had been torn down. There was nothing the same, and I looked around and said, I don't want to be here. I would just you do don't a, want to be here. Would you do a meet and greet on a Zoom? Yeah. Yeah. I would. So red, so blue stacks, yeah, you could send red some money and he'll do meet and greets for you. On a so you did that with somebody before you told me, right? You had Three the guy, yeah, Three yeah, people. Said, the guy from Texas. What did you charge? He made me an offer. I I didn't even uh I had didn't have that in mind. Uh, but he told me the first time he said, How much will two hundred dollars get me? And I said, Two hours? What do you want? You know, hundred dollars an hour, whatever. And he said, I'll give you five hundred. And I said, Okay. He sent it to me through my PayPal. And then again, he sent me more money because he didn't make the time that he was supposed to be there. And he said, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm gonna pay for your time. He was an attorney. He was an okay. attorney. Okay. So, yeah, if you want to, Blue Stacks or anybody else to do a one-on-one -on -one there and talk with uh, Red, uh, yeah, Red will do that. So, um, I don't. I, I don't. you got to come on the tour. <laughs> In the flesh. Yeah. Uh, Red, where did JL serve his time? Julian wants to know. You said it earlier. Um, he went from uh, the MCC to... Um, uh, and in it's in um, North Carolina. It's the um, it's a medical facility in North Carolina, and from there he was sent to, to uh, out to uh, Florence, Max. Okay. Um. Leanne, it's kind of common knowledge that. That's true. That can grow on cow manure, are psychedelic. Really? I yes. said it is knowledge. I mean, That's I what know. I was trying to tell you. <laughs> All right, I didn't know that. All right, I didn't know that. Sounds like you. Sounds like you're a bunch of fun guys. You hung out with Red. <laughs> fun guys. I never tried it. More. More Bohemians died at Hiroshima than J Japanese. They were all running towards the mushroom. Oh my God. <laughs> God. Oh my Rhonda. Oh, Rhonda. Come on. <laughs> Dude, jeez. <laughs> Adam, do you remember? Your, oh think? my God. You gotta, stop it, guys. This is, yeah, it took forever to get that taste out of my mouth. Uh, Adam, the Sopranos episode was taken from the murder of John D'Amato, the boss of the D. Calvicante, De Cal Calvicante family. He frequented swingers clubs. His girlfriend let it slip that she caught him with a man. Oh, yes, I heard that story oh. from many different people, but I never watched the episodes. Oh. 
Um, okay, so now I'm really crying, Don. She said, I can't stop this. I remember as a kid, I used to pick Cardone, Cardone, Cardone in the yard next to me and zucchini flowers and Swiss chard. Don, did you do that too as a kid? Wow. I don't even know what Cardone <laughs> is and zucchini flowers. All right. Um, Frank Ferraro, you have a great, well, uh, great weekend too, buddy. Uh, and it was uh, nice to see you today. Thank you, Frank. There, yeah, Korean godfather who made you an offer you couldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crying too. Oh, I love that fun. one. Too much fun. I love it, all the guys that participate and girls that participate. But there's so many of you that just lurk and watch the show. And you don't participate, but you love watching the show. And thank you to you guys, too, for watching the show. Because with this participation, with Red, with you guys watching but not participating i mean you you're, i guess you're participating by watching but you're just not going in the comments and some of you can't watch live because you're at work or this or that thank you very much for watching the shows that we're putting on and uh even if you can't catch them live we really do appreciate it give me a like if you can please i need all the help i can get yes please hit the like um Brad, curious, did any of your bookstore workers actually get arrested or did the Chicago police just issue your bookstore a violation ticket? Every so often, I, I had connections with the police department and every so often I get a phone call at home and they would tell me, we got to take a pinch. And I would say, okay, you know, and one guy told me, I'll never forget it. He said, it's been three years. We've been busting this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And, he, and I said, okay. What? And we, I had three shifts because we were open 24 hours. And uh, um, he said, well, which shift do you want us to get them on? And I said, four to midnight. And so he said, okay. So I went to my employees. And I what they used to give them was one year supervision, which means don't get in trouble for one year. And I had a couple guys that were already busted. So I went to the new guy and I said, hey, you know, you got to take a pinch for me. And I paid him extra to take the pinch. And I paid his bonds and everything else. But uh, that's how it went for me. I took less than anybody in the city. But that was because I helped police, too. I helped sure. the police with a lot of things. And they didn't know I was uh, working undercover for the FBI. <clears throat> and that was something you had to... I don't know. You you wear three hats, man. Yeah, man. That's got to be a. You don't want to mix up what the hell you're saying and who you're saying it to. That's for damn sure. No. Wow, Rhonda, great show, Adam and Red. Thank you for your time. You're very welcome, Rhonda, and thank, thank you, you all, of, all of you um, as well. Thanks for giving uh, the like, Scott. Appreciate it. And um, Polly Walnuts. Hey, I'm a lurker. Thanks for being a lurker, man. And thanks, really, all of you that are watching the show. It's um, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun that we have here. So you, um, what do you say, Red? I'm I was heard, sure. I always heard Tony was a tough guy. That being said, I bet a bunch of dudes was scared to whip him in fear they'd be killed. Frank's story of taking a beating as an example. Yeah, a very good one. Yeah, so a very good one. All right, Red. Well, it's been fun this afternoon. We're going to have to figure out what to do next week. <laughs> yes, we'll do it. So we'll be back. Thank you all for watching. It's like MacArthur. It's, it's like General MacArthur. I shall return. <laughs> I shall return. <laughs> we'll see you next week, Red. Thank you. The combination of the videotapes and we met's testimony resulted in the conviction of two men on extortion charges. One of them was Frank Schweiz, known in syndicate circles as the German, a feared mob terrorist and a suspect in a number of gangland murders. He was described to me by other outfit individuals as uh, the most feared hitman. And uh, as he said to me, my reputation precedes me, son.